Welcome to Aurora Connects. This is episode 16 for July 17th, 2020, The Carlins. I'm Associate Artistic Director, Dawn Monique Williams. And to get us started this week, I'm gonna actually hand it over to Artistic Director, Josh Costello. Uh, yeah, we have a very sad announcement to make, everybody. It's with great sadness that we share the news that Aurora Theater Company co-founder Marge Glixman passed away yesterday. Uh, in addition to being Aurora's original props artisan, Marge was a beloved member of the Aurora family, and she will be dearly missed. Her legendary basement and attic housed a treasure trove of props and costumes and played host to many rehearsals and play readings for various Berkeley theater companies over the years. In fact, um, when I uh, co-founded Impact Theater in 1996, we had our very first rehearsal in Marge's basement. Um, so uh, we're, we're really sad to hear of um, the passing of Marge Glixman. Uh, Tom Ross, uh, my predecessor as artistic director who was with Aurora from the beginning said, uh, this is a quote from Tom Ross. Uh, I am heart sick at this news. I've not seen Marge for at least a year or longer, but I loved her energy and generosity and of course her all encompassing support for Aurora. Her membership at the Berkeley City Club gave us our first home and kept us growing there. And her skill with props and collection of costumes helped measurably in making our productions shine. The costume shop in Aurora's basement is named after her. Um, so our love and support goes out to Marge's friends and family. If you would like to share your own memory with us about Marge and experience you had with her, please feel free to do so in the comment box on Facebook or YouTube. Email us at connects at auroratheater.org. We'd love to hear from you if you have a personal story you'd like to share about Marge. We'd also love to hear for you, from you if you have ideas about the show or things you'd like us to discuss and guests that we could have on. We want to announce that our uh, our annual fundraiser Supernova happened this week. It was a big success. We went online. Lance Gardner was our host. It was a lot of fun. We had some wonderful performances, and we surpassed our goal. So um, if you're interested in checking out Supernova, it is uh, you can watch the whole thing. It's on, um, including the performances, it's on our website and on our YouTube page. Uh, so we hope you'll check that out. We hope you'll donate to Aurora. Um, and uh, we hope that you will purchase a membership for the coming season, which gets you access to all of the programming that we are putting together for you, as well as seats to any uh, live performances that we're able to do over the next 12 months. Great. Today we are joined um, by a dynamic mother-daughter duo who have been theater makers in the Bay Area for generations, um, Joy and Nancy Carlin. Welcome. Thanks. Oh, hey, hi, everybody. It's great to see you both. Welcome. Happy. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, we're so happy to have you both. Um, we thought we'd try something a little different uh, uh -oh. rather than Josh or I read off your bios. We thought mm -hmm. we'd let you introduce one another. So Nancy, would you like to just tell us a little bit um, about your mom and, and her relationship to Aurora and her esteemed career over the years? Yes, and, and stop me if I go on too long because there's a, a lot to say, but this is my mother, Joy Carlin, who I get to introduce, um, who uh, is a long time uh, a beloved part of Aurora, who's done, done lots of acting and directing there and and cohorting, and um, but my mother is uh, yes is is a bit of a legend who grew up in Chicago uh, and was part of the uh, Shelley can tell you more of that but uh, the Chicago Playwrights Theater and the Compass Players, which became Second City. She started out with those guys as a teenager with Mike Nichols. You may have read in the recent biography of him, her talking about him, and then went. Uh, went to the University of Chicago, then to Yale Drama School, then to New York, and uh, has th had three kids starting uh, young, and I'm her third. Uh, I was born in New York when she was there. Uh, she had understudied on Broadway and was working there. And in Lee Strasberg's class, I was in utero with her, so that was <laughs> my start. But then we moved to California in the early 60s, and she was a part of um, the American Conservatory Theater from not quite the beginning, but almost the beginning. She had gone to Yale with Ed Hastings and came in there and was, so I grew up with her at ACT, 
most of the time. And then the year I went to ACT as a grad student, she was at Berkeley Rep as an art, acting artistic director. And then after my training, uh, we got to work together in the company at ACT and in uh, various places since. Um, so she has been part of uh, Bay Area Theater for a long, long, long time, but she did have that uh, New York, Chicago start there. And it's, uh, that's my mom. <laughs> How awesome. Joy, yep. you wanna share a few highlights of Nancy's uh, career? Oh, sure. Uh, well, I think Nancy uh, wanted to become an actress at an early age. And I remember in New York, as I walked out the door at six o'clock, <laughs> she was trailing behind me. She wanted to come with me. And I, I think it wasn't just mommy, I want to be with you, but I want to do what you're doing. I, I, I think it was planted in her at that time. I'm not sure. She'll have to tell you that. But I think um, I think that that was true. I, the other side of our family, uh, my my husband was not was not in the theater. He was a scholar and a lawyer and a painter, and uh, but he. Uh, he he encouraged the theater. He liked it. He loved it. And thank God, <laughs> uh, or we never would have stayed together. Uh, I came across a bunch of love letters. And this is what I'm doing in isolation as I'm uncovering the past. And um, it's interesting. Uh, I was giving him a hard time. So I was so afraid that he would interfere with my career. Uh, of course, he didn't have nothing to do with it, nor not to do with it. But anyway, it was interesting. Um, and Nancy has been the, the joy of my life after two boys, two, uh, one very rambunctious boy and one rather studious, uh, wonderful musical boy. And Nancy chose to follow me. And uh, I was very happy she did because there's no more fun for me than working with her. And I've used her a lot. And, and Tom used to say, oh, I suppose you want Nancy for that part. I said, yes, <laughs> <laughs> a lot. Okay, okay. I'm not worried about nepotism. I'm picking the best actress here. So we did that. And uh, and I think the, we did it quite a, uh, at ACT together. We were in, uh, well, you said that, Real Nancy. Cities. A Tale of right. Two Cities, A Lie of the Mind. Lie of the Mind. I remember wow. that. Played uh, mother, daughter, and that. I was Beth, and she was May. That was a rough one, and she had that great part of the, she had a stand and give a log and burst into psychiatric tears. It was really good. And so, you know, I've admired her work and uh, love working with her. It was and now she, I'm certain, a, she's no. a good friend. Go ahead. Well, I was going to say, we certainly want to uh, take a deeper dive into some of those stories, but we did want to offer you an opportunity if either of you wanted to share a thought or a memory um, about Marge, we wanted to leave the space for you to do so. Oh, sure. You know, uh, it's so odd because I just heard from Marge. Uh, it, it's, you say she died yesterday. But I thought maybe I just got to the email I had from her, it must have been the day before, that she enjoyed seeing me being well and alive uh, on the uh, uh, Aurora. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, and it was so good to, to hear from her. So she must have died rather suddenly. Uh, and she, of course, she was, you know, it was always Ask Marge in the old days of the Berkeley Rep uh, at the... Uh, uh, women's club, or what is it called? Aurora at the city club, yeah. At the city club. She, uh, she was, she, I don't know where she got all these things. She had all these wonderful pieces of furniture. Uh, and we had whatever we needed, and if we asked Marge, she got it, or she had it in her basement. And she was always just around and encouraging and just such a positive person, just a lovely person, and I miss her a lot. I, I, I can't believe it. You know, in one week, I've heard, ah, that's Marge, and then oh my God, she passed away. Terrible, terrible. Yeah. We'll all miss her. 
Um, well, thank you for sharing that. I, I have this, I mean, I just, the, the shows I directed, I directed two plays in the old space at the City Club and uh, um, Life in the Theater and the Second Man, which had interesting, I remember just going to her house. She said, come over and look through the things, <laughs> which was, mm -hmm. which yeah. was just, she was very, very um, present and, and energetic and, yeah. and excited by things. And she was a great energy. True, true, true. Yeah. Well, she will be missed for sure. Okay. Um, you started to talk a little bit about, um, uh, Joy, about, about Nancy as a, a child and realizing that she was going to follow you into a career in the theater. I'd love to hear more about um, Nancy as a, as a kid. What kind of kid was she? What embarrassing stories do you have about, about young <laughs> Well, uh, she, was, she was a very good kid. And uh, uh, my parents because the hair, if you go, I had three older brothers, but they were much older than I. I was 12 years younger than yeah. my younger brother. Her brothers are quite close together. They're two and a half years apart. And then she came about three years after. Uh, and they picked on her a lot. They really, really did. Um, uh, and she, we have, uh, and she, she had a character she played and that they played with her, which was Nurse Nancy, remember that? Oh, yeah. And I have a picture of her, we lived on West End Avenue, 103rd and West End in New York, and uh, they would play on the sidewalk. You know, if we didn't go a block to Riverside Drive, they would play on the cement in front of the house. And I have this great picture of her in her nurse's outfit. Uh, taking care of one of the boys who'd been hit on the head by the other one because they were all they were fought they fought a lot and, uh, and the, but they're very different those boys and Nancy and it's so lovely because they're so close now and that just makes me so happy because uh, the older of my sons is was very studious and um, while the my middle son Alex, who is a rock star in Moscow, so you have an idea of his <laughs> life, and he uh, he lives more or less on a train in the good days when we're not when he's not isolated in his uh, room in an apartment. In the last stop, the, he told me, I said, "Are you?" He just moved recently. Are you uh, in downtown Moscow? He said, "I'm in." A, I'm in the area of the last Moscow stop, which he doesn't like. He likes being much more in the center of things. But uh, he's been working overseas for, I don't know, 25, 30 years. Uh, but and then in Poland and then uh, when the Soviet Union and even in the Soviet Union days, he would go into Russia. He speaks Russian. Both my boys took Russian at Berkeley High and uh, when Alex finally got his degree from UC Berkeley, it was in Russian language and literature. But Nick, the uh, elder of the two, um, he, he was the uh, quiet, studious one. And he uh, went, of course, to Berkeley High, as they all did. And he went to Harvard and he went to law school. And he's a lawyer, but he also plays the cello and he's a wonderful musician. And his wife is a violinist. And, their two daughters are headed for the theater. Yeah. <laughs> they're, very, <laughs> they're very talented. They sing like angels and dance and so on. And, and they want, want to be, uh, at least the older one wants to be a musical comedy star, and she probably will be. Uh, and um, this musical comedy theater. No, in the future. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> That's her. So, so was Nancy like in plays in when she was a when she was a yeah, kid? So and you would, you would I, can I answer that? that? Yeah. Oh, sorry <laughs> to talk over you. Oops, excuse me. Um, oh, no, I'm sorry. I was just going to say I did do a lot of plays as a kid, uh, but I think what is interesting actually about our dynamic is it's not like the stage mom that puts your kid on the stage, because. Oh, yeah. I was, I really just did my own things with kids in the neighborhood or in my classrooms. I put on plays in grade school. I, and, and Berkeley High, when I got there, had a great theater department. We did a lot of great theater. So I wasn't like a professional child actor. And mom, I very specifically, didn't want me to be in that world. And I really, I do appreciate that. I mean, I just had, oh, there's me at Berkeley High School with Charles McNeil. Oh. In a dance, I choreographed to a poem I wrote. 
It was so Berkeley, yes. Called yeah. Honey. And that, oh, there's Berkeley High. Yeah. That's the Buckeye. Oh, that, the but yeah. I mean, at Berkeley High, they didn't do yeah, it. Did, well. We didn't mess around in Berkeley High. My sister. Um, yeah, there we are with the Maynads. Um, but I really appreciated that. And even going off to college, it wasn't about what theater program are you going to go to? My mom's right. philosophy, which is still, it was a lot of part of the way I am as well. She said, don't, don't worry about that in college. Go to university to just learn things, you know, uh, don't it, be, take everything, learn everything you do, the history, the science, the everything you do will make you a better artist and someone that I would want to work with. You know, that's kind of what she instilled in me that, and that if you just spend all your time in theater programs with theater people, then your, your world and your perspective is smaller. That's me directing Picnic. <laughs> um, I, when, as a senior at Berkeley, I think one student could direct a project. It was in a classroom. You had to take the tech classes and stuff. And I did, I did Picnic. So yeah, so I think in that way, she let my just freedom and imagination roam. And growing up in Berkeley was a lot of dance, you know, creative dance and Isadora, that, that Temple of the Wings. I don't know if either of you, you know, the Isadora Duncan dance. It was just, you know, the sixties in Berkeley was kind of just a creative, be your own thing. I was a flower child, basically. <laughs> but I appreciate, I appreciate all of that encouragement. I didn't even major in theater in college, even though going in, I knew that's where I was headed. Yeah, um, yeah, that was my... You message get an education yeah. then yeah. don't worry about the acting part yeah That's um my you've both sort of hinted at projects you've done together there was some stories that happened before we went on air um and then even just in your introductions um we would love to know about some of your favorite collaborations together as actor and actor or director and actor huh oh okay. yeah, yeah. Well, oh, the hot why? The how and the why. Oh yeah, that mom directed me in that at Aurora a few years ago. That was that was interesting. Yeah, yeah. two character play, and and Nancy played the mom, and to someone who is coming up. It was not about theater. It was about the profession of teaching. And, that was an evolutionary biologist. Right. Right. And that, that was really good. I know that I once said, and I guess was quoted as saying, well, I know her buttons. I know what buttons to push. Uh, yeah. And that's true. I tried not to. But I re remember at first, when I first directed you, there was a, lot, a bit of crying and stuff. Oh, sure. We got through, yeah. <laughs> Tell, tell us about, so what 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 does that mean? What 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 happened? What was the what was the? Tension I mean, here? I I really uh, uh, directing Nancy. Uh, it was I didn't treat her any differently than I would somebody oh. else. <laughs> um, Howard would say you were harder on me. Oh oh, see okay. I Howard think, always, when my husband is an actor, is some, yeah, right. and she's directed both of us sometimes, and right. he would always laugh that he would get no notes and I would get like <laughs> so many pages of notes because right. she was more invest, somehow invested in getting every right. little thing. It may, it may have something to do with it. And, and also to give Howard a note takes a lot of explanation afterwards. Okay. So. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, but... I I do remember, I think it was when I was, when we were first in the company at ACT together, I, I was just starting out. So that was, I was, I do, and we, it was more, well, you did direct us in uh, The Doctor's Dilemma, which was yes. pretty yeah. early on in my late twenties, but we yeah. were, and we were in um, A Tale of Two Cities together. Yeah. And I do, I do, I mean, that's a little juice. I do remember that, uh, you giving me a note once, you know, and you're not oh. my director. And I remember thinking, yeah. oh, but it was a very good note. And I do remember it to this day. Do you remember what you said to me? Because oh. I went spitting when I was talking and you said, just shut your mouth and swallow. <laughs> <laughs> I remember trying to, uh, I remember uh, Albert Takazakis, who was a terrific director there who passed away. But 
he was directing us in something. And I said something to you. And he said, I'm the director, you uh, know, on me giving you. Yeah, you know. That was probably a lie of the mind. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it was nice. I mean, when I, so years, it, it has mellowed, of course, over the years and become yeah. um, easier. Right. And, you know, we work like if you have an audition, I would coach her on that. You know, we've worked right. that, okay. that way. But, um, <laughs> no, I love <laughs> Uh, but we do know each other well and how, so we can shortcut to certain things. Yeah. But I, uh, I'm, I'm very proud and happy of my children. And um, Nick is a terrific lawyer and a terrific musician that has so many interests and in, uh, history and everything in the world. And, um, and Alex has made uh, a life for himself that he he's so dedicated to being the musician he is. He writes his own songs too, and sing. And is uh, he in, came into Russia singing every song that the Beatles ever wrote because they loved the Beatles all across Russia from Sochi to Siberia, and uh, he. And then he would, and he sings in Russian. And, and, and he, I believe, I asked him recently if he would uh, think of coming home to live sometime. And he said, I'd like to visit more, but no, I don't think so. So, I mean, I think he's going to live there. I uh, hope everything stays peaceful. And then, and Nancy, and, and so I, you know, in my old age, I'm, I'm a lucky woman. I, I realize that. Do you guys see each other every day? Um, well, yeah, they, Nancy and Howard, I don't need them to, but they come up every day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we and don't live too far. Them, All right. And yeah. mm -hmm. Yes, I do see them most, most. Yesterday, you didn't come and I was, I said, we really don't have to come today. And that was the first time in a long time I, have, I just didn't see her yesterday. So, but, but really, in our adult life, we've talked okay. to each other almost every day. I mean, there's a period of time, probably from teenager. I, I felt like my teens into my twenties. Oh, I don't know if I don't really talk to you more than every yeah. month or a couple of weeks. You know, I, I was very much independent in those early years, and and she was so busy and everything. So it's been interesting. It's probably yeah. from being thirty to sixty now yeah. that. Well, you know, one of the interesting things when I was working at ACT and in those days, um, you, I could get a, I could go from door to door, my house in Berkeley, to the parking lot right next door to ACT, that circular parking lot, which only cost $60 a month, if you can believe it, in 30 minutes, door to door. So I could come home for dinner. And when then go I was back. a kid, right. She would come home on dinner break from the yeah. city. Can you imagine that now? Yeah. No. Wow. And we always, we had a little, there was always a little room that we gave to a student who could cook. So that student, and we've had, the kids had many different flavors in their early lives. Uh, and they, uh, they would cook dinner and I'd come home for dinner and then go back. Yeah, two show days, wow. And that was really on two show days or if we were rehearsing often, yeah. we were so we were rehearsing a play, sometimes two plays, one in the morning, one in the afternoon, and then doing a show. I night. even wonder, should I go home from Aurora to my house, which is just a <laughs> box, you know, between shows. It's just, <laughs> but anyway, yeah. I could never do it today because it would just take too long, you know. What was it like? I'm I'm curious about ACT and the Bay Area theater scene in general during that that period of the the 70s when when ACT was really getting started. What was the what was the vision for the regional theater movement at that time, and how was ACT a part of that? Oh yeah, well, ACT was very much a part of it, and uh, but an unusual part because we were, I believe, we were the only company that was actually working in rep. And we would have, you could see five day, five plays in five days. Uh, and, uh, and we had two theaters and there were actors, one was the Bury and the other was the Marines. And there were actors uh, running <laughs> between, you know, to make an appearance. This is seriously through. Uh, 
in a play at the Geary and then get back up to the to, for the third act at the Marines. Stuff like that was happening. It was like a circus. Yeah. Uh, it was really quite amazing. And, um, I, you know, I just watched uh, The Taming of the Shrew. Um, I'm taking a Shakespeare course, which is terrific with uh, Philippa Kelly uh, that she's doing on Tuesdays. And we were, and uh, I, so I was watching Bill Ball's uh, The Taming of the Shrew. With the Beastmaster and... Yes, the Beastmaster, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. Singer, yeah. But it it is so brilliant. It is so of a piece. You know, it's commedia down to every detail. Mm -hmm. The moves they make. If they take a they don't just walk off, they go, -do -do -do. I don't know. I well, in that production, they're so precise with the language at the same time. I mean, that's really it's yes. a it's a delight yes. to watch that that video. I've watched it a bunch of times because they're so <laughs> specific with the language and with the physicality at the same time. Oh my. No mics. Uh, everybody speaking so clearly, knowing really what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. You know, no, oh, just blah blah blah. You know, yeah. I, I think every director should watch that just for inspiration. It's really wonderful. Uh, so, uh, so what, what was it? Just well, about regional theater in the seventies. I mean, I think it was a flagship of sorts for yeah a lot of places. Yeah. There, there was, there were, uh, well, you know, I was just telling somebody about this. I think it was Rolf. Rolf came over for breakfast this morning. We took off our masks and ate. Oh, and, <laughs> uh, Rolf Saxon. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I was telling him uh, about, uh, oh, yeah, about watching Taming of the Shrew. Uh, and how uh, how well planned it was. Well, you've seen it recently, have you, Josh? You sound like you have. Um, it's you know. Oh, I I miss those the speech. You know, Mr. Ball, crazy as he was, he he would sit up in the second balcony, and we would do voice class, mm -hmm. uh, and and he would want to hear us. And by the way, this the stage was raked, you know, which was more presentational, which meant that, you know, that first few weeks, you got a backache, you know, walking on. But, uh, but it made you stand, you know, like th th this is what he liked. You know, I was not in his play. I was never in a play directed because I was not one of his kind of actor. I was an Ed Hastings and Alan Fletcher actress because... Uh, they they were they had the voices which I don't have, they and they had I don't know that mainly it's the voice because if you notice in um, Taming of the Shrew and Cyrano, those crystally clear voices as you said the pronunciation and everything it's that was part of his style you know so it's good it was good. But the Bay, you know, the Bay Area in the 70s and into the 80s and all that was very much ACT and everyone else. It was definitely a kind of, that's true. Felt like an ivory tower of sorts. So, because I know when I met my husband Howard, he'd never seen a play at ACT and he'd been here since the mid 70s. And so that was, you know, well, was there were no companies uh, except Ashland. There was, Ashland always had a company. Right. Uh, Berkeley Rep was starting up a bit of a company. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Know. You're yes. absolutely right. Berkeley Rep and Michael Leibert's uh, idea was to have a company of actors from the very beginning. Right. Uh, that's true. That's another, yeah, yeah. story. Yeah. Yeah, we had to, I should acknowledge we're having some technical issues here. We had to say goodbye to Dawn um, and had to go, but we're, um, uh, getting the, the video back into shape, but I think everybody can still hear us just fine. So we can, we can keep on. Oh, good to hear us. Chatting, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Did we go away for a bit? I yeah, Don had, to, Don had to step away. Um, uh, you, got, you mentioned um, Howard in passing, um, and yeah. this is Howard Swain. Tell us about, about Howard. How did you guys, how did you guys meet, Nancy? Uh, we met, um, we met through the theater, but not being, by being cast in a play together. You know, you often would meet people when you're working on a project and, I met Howard through mutual friends. He was working like Berkeley Shakespeare Festival when it was at John Hinkle Park. Mm -hmm. And 
I met him through Richard E. T. White and Julian Lopez Marias were the fellows that introduced me to Howard. And so, and we both lived in North Beach. I was a third year MFA student at ACT and he was an actor at the Magic and the Berkeley Shakes and places like that. So I think that was the first uh, date we I had as I invited him to a, I had opening night tickets to see Midsummer Night's Dream that I was in. I was playing Hippolyta, Annette Benning was Titania, I remember, and, and Peter Donut. And I, it was, so that was our first, uh, first date, I guess you'd say. And then we, so we both lived in the neighborhood and I would come home from a show. I'd take the, in those days, your muni pass, you could take the car or whatever. Hello. Sorry. Okay. Doorbell. He's ringing the doorbell at Aurora. Sorry uh, about that. I came, um, I came, um, uh, wait, now I've lost my train of thought. I, I was, um, uh, where was I? <laughs> the doorbell knocked out of me. I was oh, there's, there's a photo of Howard. Uh, oh, there he is. There we are in uh, Twelfth Night at Cal Shakes. Yeah, no, he would meet me at the cable car after a show. We'd go to Mario's Bohemian Cigar Store on Washington Square, and that was sort of our first years. And we lived separately in North Beach, and then we both got hired together in Ashland uh, because of Ed Hastings. He was directing The Tempest, and I he cast me as Ariel and Howard as Caliban, and we had another nice season. So we went up there for the year and that's the year we got engaged. And then from there, Ed Hastings was given the artistic directorship of ACT and brought us down into the company in the next year. So it's really, you know, Ed has really been a little angel in our, was an angel in our um, mm. process, you know, in our professional mm. life. So we, we came into the company that next season and we were in the company together with my mom in this extraordinary time Mm -hmm. uh, before the earth and after the earthquake, but before the earthquake in the old dressing rooms, which were little twofers <laughs> or, you know, mom and I shared a dressing room. We yeah. did, I think there was a picture I gave you of that too. We were backstage doing, we were in the seagull. I was Masha and she was Paulina. That was one of them. And yeah, there we are. Mm -hmm. I used to do selfies with my camera. See, I have sort of a series of dressing room mirror shots, but uh, that was pretty special. And I, I, I was, you know, I was young, but I appreciated how special that was that I could share a dressing room with my mom and, mm -hmm. and Howard was in the company. So that was a, a pretty rare and extraordinary time, those uh, Ed Hastings company years that we were part of that. And Howard yeah. and I got married in 88 and moved to Berkeley. And, you know, we, it's just, it's interesting to have long careers in one area, like the Bay Area. And it's a lot of, you know, it's strange to start your career at the biggest house, you know, at ACT and be part of a company. And they're really in theater, there's, there's in terms of just size and live, livability, salaries, you know, it's hard to go up from there in the theater in the Bay Area. But there's been, I will say that there have been so many things, had I had the company gone on and on that I would never have experienced, you know, other kinds of projects that I create or directing or working with Aurora and Shotgun and all those places. So, uh, you know, sometimes being thrown out of the nest, you find lots of other um, extraordinary experiences you wouldn't have. Mm -hmm. Wow. True, yeah. true. Yeah. Um, What's something um, you guys love about the Bay Area theater community, the theater scene here? Well, I, I could say this, that since there are no longer companies, and I believe in companies, uh, the whole, I mean, I consider a large group of actors throughout the Bay Area as my company, right. you know, because I've worked with so many of them over and over again, that's all it means. And they've worked with each other and their new people have been coming in and they become part of the company. And so it's a, it's kind of a, it's, it's a small enough city, a small enough area. I'm, I'm including San Francisco and uh, the East Bay uh, to, I mean, to consider them a company. I mean, if, if I have actors, in a play and some of them don't know each other. Um, I 
always, although I guess I do this anyway, I have them all over for dinner before we start rehearsing because I think it's important to to really know one another as human beings, you know? It helps, it helps the acting, so, and it's it's good. And that's what makes this big company we have. Yeah. I feel that way too. I feel like it is an extraordinary community um, you know, and sometimes going to auditions is like, you know, your social time to see your friends. And it does feel, it feels quite generous. I mean, it has uh, as a group, you know, I have people in other communities or even when I was starting out and talking to my friends in New York and LA and saying, oh, I should probably be there. And they go, oh my gosh, no, you sounds like what you have there is so special and you should appreciate it. Hmm. So, you know, uh, Right. I do. I mean, this is such an unusual time right now. We're all in together here. I mean, certainly we all feel each other's pain about it, um, just being away yeah. from the theater. But, but it feels like a, you know, it feels like a, a bigger family. Yeah. I love that. How are, how are you making it work right now? What's, what are you, how are you keeping um, busy, but also keeping artistically fulfilled in this, in this moment where we can't make plays? <sighs> Well, I'm not, I'm not doing anything. Talk to anybody. What? Yes, you're always doing some. I know. Well, I've, the I've, hustle. I've, I've, I've had a, a lovely career. I'm happy that I was lucky enough to have it. And now I'm, yeah, that's what I'm doing. I'm putting my uh, filing cabinets together for my children to look at when I'm gone. Oh. So <laughs> don't worry. I'm feeling really well. Um, um, yeah, and I think about those things. And now Nancy has things to say. So. Do I? I mean, I think part <laughs> of what's being creative is that we do, we're trying, we're reaching, we're enjoying the little tidbits we get of, of the creative work that's going on. Yeah. Uh, we both have enjoyed watching, you know, like, like the uh, public, the Apple family plays or something, you know, like seeing, seeing actors acting in this crazy <laughs> little mode. Yeah. Um, I'm teaching, which is, um, which keeps me on some kind of schedule and uh, keeps me connected to uh, a certain generation of students. I, I haven't yet taught, uh, begun an acting class with wannabe actors right now. That would be, I, I wouldn't want to get too, you know, sad or cynical right now. It's just so hard to know when, you know, what's going to, when we're going to get back on the boards. But, um, but I'm still, you know, I still have, uh, I want to, you know, I have dreams of writing more because it's a great time to be a writer. <laughs> um, yeah. And, uh, and probably other creative things. Like uh, I have everything out on my dining room table to, to do some more cutting and gluing. I love making collages and things like that. So, um, uh, yeah, I mean, being creative in those kinds of just things, tactile things, uh, you're teaching three times a week, aren't you? Three. Right now, I'm teaching a lot. Yeah, I. But um, you teaching know, nurturing, nurturing the next uh, generations. That's right. Mm -hmm. Um, we have a little video clip I want to share. This was from Supernova. Michael Ray Wisely um, put together a video that showcased our green room, uh, which uh, there's a there's a until now secret tradition backstage that actors and people working on our shows have been. Um, uh, doing backstage, and uh, and you guys were part of this video, so we're going to share just a, a, a short little video clip um, from uh, Supernova. This is how it all started. Two of our great donors, oh, do Sterling Perkins and Skip we may not have sound. they named a dressing room, and up came this beautiful steel engraved plaque, and it said the Joy Carlin dressing room. Well, then everybody started ribbing me about it. And they started putting up signs of their own, my own daughter. So I can't say for sure whether mine was the first label back there, but it was certainly in the first wave. Uh, there was this uh, plaque that read uh, the Joy Carlin dressing room. And I put a sign over it, uh, it and said uh, the Nancy Carlin Joy Carlin dressing room plaque. So I named the plaque. So that was that was uh, that was um, a little glimpse of our of our green room. So um, uh, anything you, <laughs> anything you want to any more to that story you want to share with us? 
<laughs> started a whole tradition. Now everything backstage has been has been claimed and signed by by actors and right. production yes. assistants, and including the doorknobs and light switches. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, I think we uh, we uh, told that story in a pretty you know we got to the meat of that story. <laughs> um, uh, before we before we wrap this up, um, any any last thoughts about? Um, uh, about just a favorite Aurora memories or, or um, anything you want to share about favorite times you've, you've worked together? Uh, oh, Aurora. I mean, we did Rocket to the Moon back in the old days. We, Nora, my mom directed Nora, the Bergman adaptation of Doll's House, which uh, yeah. was... Um, in the old place, in the old, old, old place. Um, and then Rocket to the Moon we did in that front room at the city club, which mm. is bigger. That's from Rocket to the Moon. That's Howard, my dear husband, playing Ben, and I'm, I'm playing a dentist. You know. I'm a big fan of Clifford O'Dance, you know? Yeah. So I've directed Wake and Sing twice, uh, once at the Berkeley Rep and once at the Aurora. <laughs> we did and Golden Boy at the ACT. Boy at ACT, and uh, uh, I don't know. I. I uh, oh, uh, I don't know, but almost all of them. Uh, and I like uh, language. I like the language. I like plays. I like Irish plays too. I like languagey plays um, that where you have to have accents that are precise and stuff. And anyway, I just love those dialogues. So you, but you've never been yeah. the awakened sings. No, we did that together at Aurora, did, did, have we? Am I uh, you, at the Aurora, you and I? I don't think so. I don't think so either. Yeah. I don't think so. Um, but we did, um, right, My Old Lady oh, um, yeah. at Marin Theatre Mar Company and, and the... He played my daughter. But yeah. Yeah. With Anthony Fusco. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, but... But at the Aurora, I mean, the the way it is now too. But in that old space, it was intimate. You know, you were you were right there in their faces, and and uh, even in Rocket to the Moon, um, Howard, we we tell the story where people would reach in and get water out of the water cooler because it was hot, and that was part of a set. You know, people <laughs> would just think they could just partake. Um, <laughs> But, um, Did you have a sense when, when Aurora was just getting started that um, that it would still be here all these years later and, and in a in a bigger space and you know with with you know other artistic directors besides Barbara Oliver and like that it would become an, an institution that that it is now? I I think so. I I mean Barbara Barbara was incredibly brave. You know I th I once said this at some early Aurora gala I guess. But I, I truly believe it that, you know, Barbara was, an, she and Bill were actors at Carnegie Tech. And when they came to Berkeley and he got a job as a professor here and they, uh, she, she pulled back. She really didn't do anything, but she had that, you know, she still had the urge to do, to act, to direct and to do all those things. And when the kids were grown up and Bill passed away, she went for it. And so I, I know that uh, there was something about the way it started and the way she conceived of the Aurora that it would go on. I, I had no uh, idea, you know, that it could, when she passed off, passed off like it would end. Or, or from, I know, I think it's gonna be here. And it's, uh, and it's the people, people in this area love the Aurora, you know? Uh, I mean, they can go to Berkeley Rep and they do and they enjoy that. It's a whole different thing. We offer something different at the Aurora. We offer food for thought and to talk about afterwards and uh, and we give them some pizzazz too, you know? But anyway, I know I, I have great confidence in the Aurora. Because you're because the Aurora was conceived that way as very artist centric, mm -hmm. really about the actors, directors, designers. And I know you've carried that on, Josh, in terms of yeah. this kind of equity amongst everyone there. Mm -hmm. But it isn't this big hierarchy where people have this mega power and people come in and out. There's, there is a feeling of, of ownership when you're an artist there. And I think that that's, 
um, that is what helps something survive. You know, if it's not about the artists, you know, yeah. poof, it's who's going to care? You know, people might think they care, but really the stuff isn't going to speak to you in that way. And and I think it's right that you're, you're bringing in new people, new people who have not, you know, thought they would be here in in the uh, at the Aurora Theater, and they're going to become part of the company, and it's going to grow in that direction, which I think is wonderful. It's it's just the way it must be, and should be. Well, I am so so glad that you two are part of the Aurora family and have been, um, you know, a part of the Bay Area theater scene for so long. Thank you so much um, for coming on the show, and thank you for this conversation. Thank you for having us on your show. <laughs> <laughs> it's so great to talk to you both. Um, we're gonna we're gonna wrap this up. Thank you. Um, uh, uh, before we go, I want to um, uh, mention an organization. We always like to lift up uh, another organization at the end of the episode of Connects. Today, we are lifting this up People's Breakfast start. Oakland. It's a grassroots grassroots Black socialist political organization which serves the houseless community essential resources. Founded by Delency and Blake in 2017, the organization has fed, provided clothing and hygiene packs to over 5,000 Oakland residents. So please uh, check out the People's Breakfast Oakland and give them your support if you can. I want to remind you also that we have memberships available to Aurora Theatre Company's 2020-2021 season, which includes an original audio drama by Lauren Gunderson, Jonathan Spector, and Cleavon Smith, which is coming in October, uh, and all sorts of other wonderful programming if we are able to reopen our theater and do live productions in our space during this uh, season then your membership will include tickets to those performances as well so please uh, check out our website uh, auroratheater.org for in information about our membership program while you're there you can also click on the link at the top right to make a donation to aurora theater company to help us get through this interruption. Uh, send us your questions, topics uh, you'd like to see us discuss in uh, future episodes, ideas for what we can do, uh, what you'd like to see Aurora Theatre Company be doing in our community during this time, connects at auroratheatre.org. Next week, we're going to have some Aurora designers to talk to. It should be a great episode. We hope we'll see you there. Uh, thank you so much for staying connected. <laughs>